people cope with and overcome life's challenges. This is Life Transformations with Michael Hart, Certified Christian Counselor and Director of Ottawa's Elam Counseling Services. Hi, this is Michael Hart of Elam Counseling Services, and I want to thank you for joining us in this version of the Life Transformation Radio Show. Today we have another interesting show lined up for you as usual. Today we'll be discussing the histrionic personality. If you're not familiar with the term, stay tuned to find out more about that. But before we get into the meat of the show, I'd like to uh, tell you a little bit more about Elim Counseling Services if you're not familiar with us. Elim Counseling Services is located in Ottawa. Our number here is 613-699-1677. We are a professional counseling center that provides counseling for a wide range of mental health issues and a wide range of couple issues. Uh, Professional counseling from a biblical or Christian perspective. We can offer both services by male and female therapists and our services are covered by insurance plans. So if you're not familiar with us, you can find out more about us at our website at elimcounselingministry.com. Elim is spelled E-L-I-M, counseling with two L's, ministry.com. And again, you can call us by phone at 613-699-1677. So with me in studio today, as usual, is Melissa Wagot. Welcome, Melissa. Hi, Michael. It's good to be back. So as you say, we're talking about histrionic personality um, people. And just getting to know you and the type of topics we cover, I'm guessing it's not a person who loves history or has a passion for history. (laughs) That's probably not what histrionic means. But I think for the sake of our listeners and myself, if you can just tell us what a histrionic personality is, like what that means, because I think it's a word that for many you've probably never heard before. Well, the word histrionic is from the Latin word histrio, which actually means an actor. So a person who is histrionic is a person who who is very theatrical and loves a lot of drama. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about a histrionic personality, we are talking about someone who who is in essence a drama queen and you know is uh, our our (laughs) king and is is very very demonstrative in 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 public and how they go about living their life. So people who are very high on the scale in in this kind of dramatic presentation and of living their lives that kind of way are given the term histrionic by 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 psychology. So it's not that they love history. It's not that they love history. No. Okay. And I think for the purposes of today's show, we're, we're talking a lot about couples mm-hmm. and sort of living with someone in your relationship who may be a bit histrionic uh, in their personality. So we talked about the definition of histrionic and where the, the term itself came from. But can you go a little bit deeper into what the histrionic personality type actually is? So the histrionic personality type... Uh, meets a number of criteria as set out in the DSM-5 manual. That's the that's the, the manual that counselors and psychologists use to determine whether or not a person is suffering from a particular mental disorder. So when it comes to histrionic, there are there are five there are five of eight conditions that a person has to satisfy before they would be considered to be histrionic. And I'll just quickly read through what the the, the the eight criterias are. The first is the person is uncomfortable in situations in which he or she is not the center of attention. So this is this is the first and one of the very dominant characteristics of a characteristic of a person who is histrionic is that they love to be the center of attention. If they're at a family gathering, they want to be the one talking the most. They want everyone to be focused on them. Uh, and how they dress is also a, a, a way of attracting attention to themselves. The second thing is that it, the, the person's interaction with others is often characterized by inappropriate sexual, seductive, or provocative behavior. So one of the attention-getting mechanism that the history on person now to use is that they will use ways of dressing sexual behavior sexual overtones as a way of drawing attention to themselves so people who are who are histrionic uh, females you'd, you'd usually be able to 
identify them as wearing very low-cut blouses or a very, very revealing and provocative way of dressing that, that, that solicits a lot of attention. The third category, uh, the third uh, criteria is that the person displays rapidly shifting and shallow expressions of emotions. Shallow in that sense uh, is that it can go from one extreme to another very easily. For those of us with, with children, we, we we can sometimes notice shallow expression of emotions where the child goes from behaving as if it's the end of the world because a certain toy has been taken away and then the next moment they're laughing and they're, they're happy again. So histrionic are a little bit like this. They can go from extreme of, of, of emotions, and emotions are usually very shallow and doesn't represent anything that is deeply is going on very deeply at their core. Then the fourth the fourth category or the, the fourth criteria says the person consistently uses physical appearance to draw attention. To self, so this is a little bit uh, different than just the physical overtures that we we talked about earlier. So physical appearance can be in males can be uh, the, the the muscles that has to be shown, or you know the, the fact that this person wants everyone to know that they they have a six pack, so they have to dress in a certain way, or that they have very big biceps. I'm not saying that every person that does this is histrionic, but I'm saying that uh, people who are histrionic, they, they like to draw attention to their physical appearance. And then number five says, as a style of speech that is excessively impressionistic and lacking in detail. You ever meet these people, uh, Melissa, where you meet with them and they'll talk to you for an hour, you can't get a word in, but at the end of it, you just wonder, what was this conversation yeah. really about? Yeah, and it's the talking about nothing. <laughs> yes. And you're like, that that was an hour of my life just gone. Yeah, right. yeah, I've, I've had those people sometimes and they just go on and on and on. And you're like, ah. Oh. Mm. And at the end, as you say, there's nothing much been said. Absolutely. So that that is uh, uh, probably could be uh, one of the correct uh, someone who is histrionic, and then the six says shows self dramatization, theoretical and exaggerated expression of emotion. Mm. So. Uh, histrionic people like to draw attention to themselves and you and I talked a little bit of, of the show about if we have ever seen histrionic, a histrionic person grieving so uh, people who are histrionic if they're at a funeral uh, the, the funeral can quickly become about them Mm-hmm. and about their display of emotion. And this is not to put down everyone who grieves in extreme way. It's just to say that there are sometimes a, a person who is histri- histrionic and, and and extremely dramatic can take take attention away from the main purpose for which for which a gathering the get the gathering is there which is to, to to mourn the deceased so the focus becomes very much in 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 taking care of the histrionic because they will behave in an extreme way as if they're going to die and they they're they're at such as extreme uh, state of shock that the quickly the attention quickly diverts diverts to them and then the seventh uh, criteria says the person is suggestible that is easily influenced by others or circumstances. I, I th- sometimes I wonder if people who, when there is an, uh, the latest iPad that or, or iPhone that is going to be released, and people line up from 3 a.m. in the morning just to say that, look, I have the latest iPhone. I'm wondering if there isn't something that could be going on there where these people are so easily influenced by these advertisers who are advertising that there is going to be a release of the iPhone that they have to lose sleep just to get it one day before the rest of the rest of society. I'm just wondering if maybe there isn't some potential. There's some of those people who may be uh, histrionic in personality because they're they're so easily influenced by these ads that they feel that I have to get this today. Mm-hmm. And I think we have one more one more uh, personality type uh, left to see. And as we talked about with these, as we list them out, I'm sure some people may have identified maybe with one or two, whether it's in themselves or others. But the purpose of this within the DSM-5, it's it's a collection of symptomatology. It's not having one right. sometimes. Absolutely. It's the five of the eight and, and having a, a qualified individual recognize those into you. So don't freak out if you are that person who's lined up for that iPhone 
and that's one thing in your life, <laughs> don't worry. But it, it's it's more taking everything into consideration. Everything into consideration, consideration, right? And it says uh, also too that when you're when we are assessing people, these signs must number one, it must be a pervasive pattern. So it can't just be oh you you want to get an iPhone and that's the only mm-hmm. thing that you're easily influenced by. The one of the criteria, uh, one of the overguiding the overriding principles for everything that I have said so far is that it has to be pervasive, a pervasive pattern. And number two, that it has to begin early in adulthood. So so not everyone, as you said, you know, who wants to get the latest iPhone is is necessarily histrionic. So there has to be five of the eight. And the eighth the eighth criteria is that the the person considers relationships to be more intimate than they actually are. Mm. So you and I talk about uh meeting the possibility or having met people who you will talk to them for hours and at the end of it you have no idea what they have said and you get no no input to, to share your ideas because they're they're talking non-stop non-stop about things that they consider important but in a relationship it's not important and then the, these people will go away from that relation from that meeting with you saying oh we had such a great mm-hmm. connection yes we're so close yeah, it's we like are we so bonded. close i just met my soulmate yeah it's true it's true and as you say that both the the lack of depth in conversation and also the lack of depth in emotion Mm -hmm. when you're the person experiencing an individual with these type of personality traits it's hard to get a true deep connection because they themselves maybe not aren't that deep whether it's emotionally or just in their way to engage with someone Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so in hearing you describe these types of symptoms it, it, it brings to mind a topic that we've touched on i think in the past uh a little bit in another type of mental uh, disorder uh, re- that we've referred to as borderline personality disorder. And it sounds really similar. Can you describe what the differences between the two are? Well, I think, as you said, Melissa, there are some similarities, right? I think there are a lot of the psychological factors behind both borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder are the same. They they both could have this fear of being alone. They both have this fear of being alone, the fear of abandonment. They they both have attention-seeking behaviors in some way. But I, I think there are differences in, in such a, a borderline personality uh, as this tendency towards paranoia and they also also have dissociative symptoms where we find that for people who are histrionic this is not often the case we find that borderline personality disorder too uh, sometimes have more of a tendency towards suicidality than than people who are histrionic histrionic people are very highly functioning individuals that they're able to hold down a job and they're able to function at at, at a very high level in, in the workplace but they have these these issues with relationships because of their attention seeking behavior and the other the other criteria that I have mentioned before so so those are some of the major differences where a lot of time we find that people with borderline personalities they can have a very hard time coping in the workplace and and fitting into society so if someone's exhibiting this these symptoms has research and um, study of this topic been able to describe what the root cause for histrionic behavior is? It's hard to talk about causality when it comes to these kind of of, of personality issues, but there's some research that seems to suggest that histrionic personality may have developed as a result of uh, of trauma suffered in childhood. So it could be uh, uh, children who grew up in household where they were provided with a lot of the material things in life, but they weren't given a lot of affection and attention. So there is there is a, 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 a void for attention that's created, and these people go through life seeking to, to gain the attention of others, seeking to feel important because they weren't made to feel loved, they weren't made to feel important in their family of origin. It could be that these these uh, histrionic personalities as children, uh, they grew up in a household where they felt abandoned as a result of how they were treated. So for the rest of their life, they're acting out, they're, 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 they're trying to create situations in which they're, they're, they're wanting to feel wanted by others. If you're just joining us, you're listening to the Life Transformation Radio Show. 
I'm your host, Michael Hart of Elim Counseling Services. And with me in studio today is Melissa Wagat. And Melissa and I have been talking about the histrionic personality type, the histrionic personality type. And for those of you who are not familiar with the term, we explained at the beginning of the broadcast that the histrionic personality is from the, the Latin word history, which actually means someone who is an actor or someone who is, who is very dramatic in how they go about living their life. So we're talking about the drama queen or the drama king, as Melissa uh, suggested in the in the beginning of the show, that it's not just the queen, but it's also you have men or, or histrionic as well. But let me just say this, Melissa, that histrionic personality types, they, they have done research that shows that about two-thirds of histrionic are women. So it, it, it seems that the majority of histrionic are, are, are women. And I, I think maybe the, the, there might be reason for this because some of the ways that we label women in our society as being dysfunctional, we don't have the same standards for men. So it could be that a man might uh, be attention-seeking as well. He goes by drawing attention to himself in the way that, he's, the way that he dresses and the way that he speaks. And we say, oh, he's just assertive. He's yes, a real he's charismatic. Business, he's charismatic. He's a business person. And we, we overlook the fact that, you know, when a woman does the same thing, mm-hmm. uh, or, or a woman displays herself uh, sexually, we see this as being dysfunctional, mm-hmm. where if a guy does the same thing, we, we don't have the same kind of, of standards for Exactly, that and I look at one of the other um, uh, symptoms or um, signs of it being inappropriate sexual behavior as well, similar thing. Um, society may have different standards for men and when women rightly or wrongly so as you say sometimes it could just be diagnostic nuance that leads to that that disproportionate representation so in, as you described as well that the personality type and the eight factors um, that the dsm-5 describes one of the ones that jumped out to me again from a past show was that person who becomes very uncomfortable when they're not the center of attention it's all about them they have to be it Right. It reminded me very much of one of our very early shows all about narcissistic personality types where they love to be the center of attention. Is there a difference between the motivation of a narcissist and the histrionic in terms of their center of attention behavior? Absolutely. I think the big difference is that when when a narcissist wants to be the center of attention, it's always per, per, portraying or positioning themselves as someone who is superior to others, someone who is better than others. The the person who is histrionic will often position themselves in a state of weakness Mm. to get attention. So they might position themselves as being sick and needy and, you know, just can't do without the, the friends. You know, they're going to fall apart if, they're, if their friends don't make them the center of attention. And so they, they, they portray themselves as being more needy and, and from a position of weakness. Whereas for the narcissist, they will have the opposite, uh, the opposite tendency, which is to p- position themselves as being superior to others and, and, and being the best at everything. Mm-hmm. So it sort of sounds like histrionic is more attention at all costs, a uh, little bit more so where yes. the narcissist is much more self-protective and proving that they're they're awesome yes. in everything that they do. Mm-hmm. Um, do we, so as we talked about off the top, we really wanted to focus on the spousal component and a couple living together. Maybe one partner is a histrionic what are some challenges spouses of histrionic individuals experience? Well, if we look at the criteria that is set out by the DSM-5, uh, we can see where they would be pro- problematic for a spouse. For example, if we if we looked at the 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 one of the category, which is the second category that I outlined, that the interaction with others is often characterized by inappropriate sexual seductive or provocative behavior. If you have a spouse that has this tendency where they go about their life and, and is is always uh, portraying themselves to be seductive or, or to, to portray themselves in, in, in ways that seems to be attracting sexual attention from the opposite sex. So you can see how, how this would be problematic for, for the spouse of the histrionic. Uh, we, we also know from studies that a lot of histrionic uh, sometimes are not able to to live monogamous life, uh, some of some, a, a lot of histrionics sometimes have a, a lot of 
promiscuity, a, a guilty of a lot of promiscuous beha- behavior. So for a spouse of someone of a histrionic, you might have to live your life dealing with these kind of issues where you're always dealing with trust issues because the, the, the spouse is always getting themselves into sexually inappropriate relationship with others. So the, the, the other challenge for the the, per, the spouse of the histrionic is that if the histrionic is caught being unfaithful or engaging in inappropriate behavior and you as the other spouse and the receiving end goes into you know being very sad and very weepy and you know is breaking down because of their behavior this might actually be enjoyed by the histrionic because they see this as a reassurance of your love and your care for them and makes them make them get attention they see this as very satisfying because it is meeting their need of getting the attention from you so if you're caught in this situation if you're listening to the show today and maybe a, 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 a bell is going off in your head saying this makes a lot of sense because I kind of get this idea this kind of feeling from from my partner that when I am weeping or when I'm going through my heartbreak, that they're not really empathizing, that they're somehow being satisfied by by the pain that I'm going through, it's possible that you're dealing with a histrionic spouse. So you can just imagine how, 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 how very traumatic this would be, Melissa. Absolutely. You, you- you you're you're crying you're reaching out and it and it's feeding this need or i think of how frustrating as well you you invite them out to the work christmas party or something and they're talking up all your friends and as a spouse it, how challenging that could be and embarrassing exactly exactly it's, your partner shows up with their shirt half unbuttoned and or showing their abs i got to poke at the guys a bit but that would be really difficult. So and do you have advice for someone who's living? Well, let, let me just say this before the advice. I've actually had, you know, uh, clients who have had just that experience that you have you have outlined where, you know, they have gone to the Christmas party with their histrionic spouse, you know, very beautiful and, you know, sexually dressed. Usually it's the woman mm-hmm. and uh, well well presented and, you know, the center of the party once they go there. And then halfway through the party, the, the, the client of mine is wondering, where's my wife? And they, they can't find her. And also the, 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 the friend of the spouse is also missing. And they turn up together two hours later mm-hmm. and can't give an account as to, you know, where she was or who she was with. And then so uh, people who have this kind of uh, personality type living with have a lot of these kind of experiences that maybe they can't really prove that there, there are inappropriate sexual things going on. But there are a lot of incidents that, that generates mistrust and heartache and pain. And your life just becomes a pattern of dealing with one thing after the other and the more you speak to this person the the, the the more the behavior continues because they see it as a form of attention and a kind of a proof that your your complaint gives them attention makes them a center of attention and makes them feel important so you know, you've asked uh, about the what can be done? Like if you're living with someone mm-hmm. who, who is histrionic uh, person that I have, what can be done? Uh, let me say that uh, it's very hard for the histrionic to find themselves in counseling because a, a, a lot of times they don't see anything wrong with themselves. And they, because they're highly functioning, they will continue this kind of behavior. Unfortunately, many histrionic do not go go into counseling until the, the, the spouse that they're living with either separates or threatens to separate unless they get professional help. And then uh, they will find themselves in counseling because they they are afraid of losing that relationship. But then even counseling once they get into counseling, that can become a challenge as well because if they are not with a skilled, experienced counselor, then you could find that this person end up charming the counselor and uh, presenting themselves, making themselves the center of attention. And before you know it, the counseling session turns into all about the the person who is histrionic. So it's very important that if you if you 
if you lay down counseling as a mandate for this person getting help, make sure that you take the person to someone who is very skilled in maintaining a balance in the session and won't allow this person to take over the session and become the center of attention. So so these can be some of the challenges that is faced by, by spouses mm-hmm. of the histrionic personality. Are there any other tips? Um, so when you're in that situation pre-counseling, maybe they're resistant or what not, whatnot, that spouses in terms of interacting with these individuals. You talked a little bit about it when you find out the partner's cheating, sometimes breaking down and crying could be a bad thing because it's feeding that behavior. Are there any day-to-day tips in terms of interacting with these individuals you could give to a spouse? Absolutely. So I would say it. One of the the main thing that I would tell clients when they're dealing with histrionic personality is to take the emotion out of your presentation because the emotion just reinforces the same kind of cycle that the histrionic like, the high drama. So if you're in a state where they have just walked through the door or they have just, they have just come back, you know, the first two hours uh, in your Christmas party, they have disappeared, they have come back with your best friend and you're angry and you, you just want to explode and, you know, talk about it right there, refrain from doing so. Wait until you have had time to to calm down. So so try to be calm when you're talking about the situation and also set boundaries because it's one thing to say, uh, I am hurt by these kind of behavior, but you also need to say these kind of boundaries are the boundaries that I, I am establishing I would like us to agree on based on, agree, agree on for our relationship and get the histrionic personality to agree on those boundaries that these things are inappropriate. And once they have bought into the boundaries that you have established together, then once they start violating those boundaries, you can call them up on, on it. But not only that, there need to be consequences for repeated actions. If the person is constantly breaking your trust, constantly doing things, inappropriate sexual things with your friends or or work colleagues or with, with pe- other people, then you need to have certain actions that you say these are consequences this is the next consequence if this happened again this is the step that i will take and very calmly and collectively state what these steps are going to be the other thing too i would say to spouse who are suffering at the hands of the histrionic is that don't allow yourself to be swayed by the dramatic presentation Mm -hmm. because the histrionic will fall at your feet in a pool of tears and start crying saying if you leave me i'm going to die and then you just give give in because of this outward display of emotion. And so you allow them to get away one more time. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of today's broadcast. You have been listening to the Life Transformation Radio Show. It's your host, Michael Hart of Elim Counseling Services. And Melissa Waggett, thanks for having me back, Thank Michael. Thank you for being here. It was quite an interesting show. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about this topic or you have another topic that you'd like us to address in the show you need help with, please call us at 613-699-1677. You can also find more, out more about us on our website at elimcounselingministry.com. Elim is spelled E-L-I-M, counseling with two L's, ministry.com. Until next time, this is your host, Michael Hart, thanking you very much for listening and praying that God would bless you in all your relationships and keep you sound in mind and pure in heart. Thank you for listening.